DLRs, what's going on Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, we're working on our Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1 outdrive engine, and this is part one of the entire bellows replacement project. Let's get started. DLRs, here we are back at the Craftsman workstation, and we have been busy. On the left-hand side, you can see our outdrive fully rebuilt, both upper and lower and everything in between. Let's take a closer look. To a closer look, and again, rebuilt. We even sanded the propeller, repainted that, and applied brand new decals. Alpha 1 Gen 1 in our case. And there are a lot of parts that go inside these outdrives. This is just the lower unit. All those parts have nothing to do with the upper unit. However, what we're going to do is we are going to pack up the schematic for the lower unit. And we are going to lay out everything for the transom, the gimbal ring, and bell housing. And start the project. And we did just that, and we are referencing our exact outdrive serial number service manual. And honestly, it's the only way to go to ensure that you are buying the exact replacement parts. And you're putting everything back together per the factory specifications. The way we've got the schematic set up is where I'm standing right now is closest to the outdrive and propeller. As we move inward, that is the transom assembly that attaches to the rear hull portion of the boat. From here, let's head out of the boat and get started. Outside of the boat now, and this is a 1989 glass port. And unfortunately, glass port went out of business in 1996. However, Mercruiser is still going strong, and that is who strapped the inboard and outdrive engine to this boat. And scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows us removing the Mercruiser 3.0 Alpha 1 Gen 1 outdrive from this exact boat. Definitely check that out. It'll bring you right up to speed where we are now. To the back of the boat, and what we did after removing our outdrive is we used a garbage bag and covered up the entire inlet to the bell housing and transom because there is a lot of grease in there and as we mentioned in that previous video if any wildlife such as birds or any type of animal get inside the bell housing and transom and they get grease on them you are never going to be able to help them get that off so that is what we did we are now going to remove that Next, direct your attention to the shift cable slide and the way this works is that little tab right there on the bottom will actually slide in and as you move the shift cable in between gears from forward to neutral to reverse back to neutral and so on it moves this entire slide and shift lever which feeds all the way down here and on the bottom side you have the slot that the shifter, which is installed on your upper unit, slides back into when you're putting the outdrive back onto the housing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this first, as well as loosen up the shift cable nut inside there. And I'm doing that now because everything is still firmly tight and secured. If I wait to do this later, after removing the hinge pins and more, this entire bell housing will be very loose. And it might be a little trickier to loosen and remove that nut. To a better close up, and before I start removing this shift cable slide, I'm going to spray that internal nut with PB Blaster and let that soak. Next, to the outermost portion of your shift cable slide, and you will see that it is secured on by safety wire and DIYers. I highly recommend taking as many photos as possible of this entire portion here to ensure when it comes time to putting everything back together, you wrap that safety wire the proper way as shown. I'll reposition the camera and start removing the safety wire. And all I'm using is a pair of needle nose pliers as shown here. And again, pictures are very important prior to removing this or undoing this safety wire. As you can see, the two parts are now separated and you can still use the pliers or you can use your hand, whatever easier. Once you have the safety wire all unwrapped, it goes through a tiny hole in the threaded stud that sticks out of the slide. And just be patient and careful as you remove this. You don't want to do too much tugging and damage anything upstream. That would not be good. Grab it with some pliers and just carefully feed it through the hole. As shown here, and there it is. Next, all I'm doing is grabbing a pick tool and cleaning the inner portion of this threaded stud here. And we need to go grab an Allen key and unscrew that. I found the proper size Allen key. It's basically trial and error until you get the right size. I'm going to spray a little bit of PB Blaster on that. And let that soak. Now to a close-up of how I have this configured. I have an adjustable wrench. 
and I'm not going to allow it to touch that threaded stud. The last thing I want to do is damage that thread or the stud itself. And I secured it to the slide, and it's been about 20 minutes for that PB blaster to eat away at any rust, and I'm going to begin unscrewing that. Again, not allowing the adjustable wrench to make contact with the threaded stud or thread, and it's got a good grip on the slide, and I'm going to loosen this. There we go. And I'm trying to give you a good camera view of this. All I'm doing is holding the slide in place with the adjustable wrench and using the Allen key to unscrew that threaded portion from the slide. As shown here, I'll remove the adjustable wrench. At this point, this entire part is able to slide back and forth and the cable itself has a stopping point, which alleviates this slide from being able to come off. And that is by design to assist in the operation of the actual shift cable when everything's put back together. However, from here, I'll shift that in and we need to head inside the boat where the inboard engine is and remove some parts up top. I have now uncovered the boat all the way up to the driver's seat or captain's seat. We need to position the throttle lever or shift lever to the neutral position. And that is going to alleviate tension on the shift cable above the engine. It is currently in forward because we removed the out drive. Now it's in neutral. Here's a view of the top engine as we shift this into neutral. Now to a close up, this will be the cable we are going to remove. You have a cotter pin right here and on the back side or base portion of the cotter pin, you will notice it is bent and we will use pliers to bend this portion flush with the other end and pull it through. In addition, we have a 7 16 nut. We will remove that. And I'm doing my best to give you a good camera view of this. There's the cotter pin, do your best not to drop that inside the engine. Next, the 7 16 nut. And below the nut is a washer. Set those aside. From here, we can pull this entire cable out of the housing, as well as this stud, and pull it up in an even manner. Because if you pull it up offset, you could damage either the stud or the housing. And just like that. From here, we need to remove this end plastic piece. And to do so, you have two set screws that are square shaped, one on each side. We need to loosen those. And in most cases, most people don't have a wrench that small. So grab a pair of pliers, carefully grip the set screw as shown here, and loosen it. And that one's loose. We'll come to the opposite side. Go ahead and set the pliers aside and this plastic end piece should slide right off. Just like that. Next, you have a jam nut right here. And if you can loosen it by hand, which surprisingly we could, go ahead and loosen that up. If you can't loosen it by hand, I believe this is a 10 or 11 inch nut. And as you loosen this, grab a hold of this portion right here of the cable housing with a pair of pliers. Next, what we'll do is unscrew this threaded shaft from the housing. Quick update DIYers, this portion right here that has the thread on it and this barrel and the jam nut, it is supposed to loosen from this housing in a friendly manner. However, due to the age of mine, it is seized, rusted, or corroded in place, and it is not budging, which is fine. We're just going to leave it on because the new cable comes with not only the housing, but all the parts, including this rod or shaft with the thread on it, barrel, and jam nut. We're going to go back down to the bellow housing and pull the cable all the way out. Back down to the bell housing and again to the shift cable slide. And real quick, a tip. You do not actually have to remove the safety wire if you do not plan on using this old slide with the brand new cable that you buy. However, in most cases, when you buy the cable, it comes with a brand new slide. So you might as well use the new one. However, if you don't want to, you have to remove the safety wire and follow the previous steps and pull the cable all the way out and remove this slide to use on the new cable. However, again, here's the stopping point. As shown here, we are just going to carefully continue to pull the entire cable out. You can see the plastic housing that feeds all the way into the inner nut. And again, just pull the entire cable out. Yeah. 
And at the tail end, you'll notice it gave me a little trouble. And that is because the very end portion of the shift cable where those set screws screwed into and grabbed a hold of, there's a slight bend to it. So it's not perfectly round. So as it slides in through the boot and this plastic housing, just be aware it might give you a little trouble. And again, to the side that has the slide on it, go ahead and slide this all the way down the cable and you can remove it from the entire cable and use it on your new cable. Again, that's if you want to. In most cases, the new cable comes with a new slide. There it is removed. Now to view with the slide and cable removed and two things prior to moving on. This screw right here inside this washer, I do not want to lose that. I'm going to tape that to the washer and I want to show you something up top. Back to the engine and the opposite end of the shift cable, I re-secured not only the washer but the nut on that threaded stud that secures the shift cable in place and I'm just carefully resting it in that housing or slot. In addition, not sure if it will be helpful, but the shift cable housing goes all the way down here and feeds to the bottom portion. And you can see where it goes through the hull and through the transom, gimbal ring and bell housing, and is secured to that slide that we just removed from the old cable. Screw is now taped to the washer next. Some people don't, but most people do. I highly recommend purchasing this tool or socket. And down below in the comment section, as well as description section, is a link on where to purchase this. It is specifically designed to remove that inner nut that secures this plastic housing in place in the bell housing. And the base of it is a three quarters inch where you hook up a three quarters inch socket. So we will slide this all the way on as shown here and align it with the nut inside the bell housing. And we'll use our three quarters inch socket to again, loosen it, and then we'll tighten it back up. Apply some friendly inward pressure to keep that tool on the inner nut. It is now loose and I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to loosen it any further, nor am I going to tighten it back in. And again, the whole purpose of doing this now rather than later is because the entire bell housing is firmly secured to the gimbal ring and transom, making it easier to remove that nut. Because in most cases, it's going to be pretty rusted and corroded and not that friendly to loosen. Taking a step back and now it's time to direct our attention to the starboard side. We are going to remove the trim sender and two Phillips screws, one on top, one on bottom. And again, Phillips screwdriver. And as I mentioned earlier, if your screws are on there tight and not budging, go ahead and carefully tap the base of your screwdriver with a hammer as you simultaneously loosen the screw. And in our case, ours are loose. And again, take photos prior to removing your trim sender and limit switch. From here, you can carefully remove your trim sender and the back side is very greasy. Just be careful as you shift this down and out of the way. And inside here is your hinge pin. I'll clean away all that grease to give you a better view of it. To a close up of the hinge pin, and you've got one on the starboard side as well as the port side. And there is a specific tool designed to remove your hinge pins. We'll show you that now. And DIYers, here it is. Down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link to purchase this. This is a must have tool when removing your hinge pins. And as you can see, one side has a machine spline cut to it to perfectly match your hinge pins. And on the opposite side is a half inch stud for a half inch socket. And carefully align the hinge pin tool inside the hinge pin without cross threading or damaging the spline. And from the manufacturer, these hinge pins are secured with Loctite. So kind of expect them to be a little unfriendly and tough to loosen and remove. We will now secure the half inch socket and long breaker bar onto the tool. And I'll give it a couple good taps just to ensure that the spline portion of the tool is all the way inside the hinge pin. And from here, I will loosen it. And in our case, not bad. And go slow, no need to rush this. Once you loosen it to a point where the hinge pin itself is sticking out of the gimbal ring about a quarter inch, you can transition to the ratchet and socket. And there is the starboard side hinge pin. Right there, check that out. To a close up of the inner thread or portion where the hinge pin secures into. Now to the port side, we will remove the trim limit switch and port side hinge pin. Port side now and DIYers again, here's our limit switch and 
the wiring is completely disconnected. Not good. Phillips screw on top, Phillips screw on bottom. Go ahead and loosen those. From here, carefully remove the limit switch. And again, in our case, it's completely disconnected and we'll remove that all together. Next, I'll just clean all that grease off there. Back to the hinge pin tool, carefully align the splines inside the hinge pin. Give it a good couple taps and back to the breaker bar and half inch socket. And DIYers, the difference between the port side and starboard side when it comes to the hinge pin, when it comes time to loosen them, as you saw from the starboard side, as we were loosening the hinge pin, it was pushing down on the gimbal housing. However, it's the complete opposite on the port side. As you loosen this, the gimbal housing will want to rise, which makes it very difficult to loosen that hinge pin. What most people do is put a foot on the bottom portion of the gimbal housing where the shift crank goes through and apply some inward pressure with their leg and foot to alleviate the bell housing from shifting up as you loosen this. And I'll shift up, show you where my shoe is. As you can see, it is pushing on the bottom portion of the gimbal housing. And in our case, not that bad. Again, DIYers, these can be very unfriendly and aggravating to remove due to the internal Loctite, as well as in the event that your hinge pin was not properly greased over the years. Because if it wasn't, guess what that leads to? A major headache when it comes time to removing these hinge pins. Again, a quick view of the bell housing going up and down as I move the breaker bar. And that's where that foot and leg power come in to alleviate that. and I'm transitioning to the ratchet and socket. And there is the port side hinge pin. Check that out. And to a close-up view of the inner portion. And you can see, actually, our little washer there. Check that out. Carefully pull these out. And if you're going to reuse them, make sure you don't damage them. Set them in a safe location as you work through the remainder of the project. And to the opposite side, it looks like it's in there. However, further to the back. And by pushing it from the back, it is coming out. Just maneuver the bell housing in a way where you can slide these out. We are going to purchase brand new washers. At this point, the bell housing itself is extremely loose. The only thing holding it on are all of the bellows. The U-joint bellow, the exhaust bellow, and we are going to shift this to port side. Come inside here and you have a bellow for your shift cable inside there. And as you can see, it is clamped on and secured in place and we need to loosen up that clamp. You will need a tool like this, which is a flexible shaft connected to a screwdriver. Back to the bell housing and gimbal ring, I shifted it to the left or port side. And again, the flexible shaft. And as you can see, it turns pretty nicely. You'll carefully insert this all the way in until you are in line with the screw on the clamp. And this is a quarter size in our case. And once you get that in place and over the screw, you can carefully begin loosening it by turning it counterclockwise. Let me give you a better view. And we believe it's loose. Here's a much better view of the clamp itself that secures the shift cable bellow to the housing. And again, all you'll do is loosen that up to a point where you can remove that shift cable bellow from the housing that it connects to. After loosening that clamp, I have grabbed a very long flathead screwdriver. Check that out. And I'll reposition the camera back inside. And all I'm going to do is come in from below. I'm going to grab a hold of the bellow and basically push it off the housing that it connects to. And at that point, I can get a little further behind. And the last thing you want to do is touch the housing itself. Do not damage, scratch, or gouge that in any way. At this point, you can see the inner cable housing. So we are satisfied with that. That bellow is loose and will be very easy to remove when that time comes in the project. Back to the wall, I've got the adjustable shaft and quarter inch screwdriver back in its packaging. And down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, is a link on where to purchase this. As you just saw, extremely important when it comes time to remove that worm gear clamp for the shift cable bellow. Back to the bell housing and transom and DIYers. Believe it or not, that is it. That completes part one of our project. And scrolling above right now is a video link that takes you to part two. Definitely check that out. We pick up right where we left off and continue the project. From here, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video. Subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you at part two.